Hello everyone, this is Jean and I'm back with another video. So first of all, again, thank you all so much for uh, the uptick in subscriptions and the recommends and the comments. The engagement is very fun and very uh, humbling. So thank you again, whether this is your first video or your 100th, I hope that you continue to uh, enjoy the content. So this is actually a spur of the moment video and this is actually going to be quite serious. So let me just get straight to the point. Ethan Van Skyver has been threatened, has been physically threatened on Twitter. From best I can tell, this is not a joke. It's being covered by um, Bounty in the Comics and DNC just made a video about it. And from what I saw from the article, at least, apparently a man named, I think, Mike Kellerman or Max Kellerman has threatened Ethan online on Twitter uh, and threatened to uh, beat him up, threatened to assault him, uh, threatened to kill him. And I want to be clear, I am not joking. This isn't just hyperbolic language. This isn't saying stuff like, I wish you were dead. Kellerman is threatening physical violence, as in, he has said, at least from what I saw, the messages in Bounding in the Comics, and which apparently this happened on Twitter and on Facebook, apparently uh, Kellerman has said, if I ever see you at a show, if I ever see you in the street, I'm going to, and I'm going to, to swear here, I don't usually do that, but I think for emphasis and to make sure it's understood, apparently Kellerman has stated that he's going to if he sees Ethan to beat the fuck out of him, that he's going to fucking shoot him and uh, blow his fucking face off and things of that nature. So this is serious. This isn't just saying, oh, I wish you were dead, right? Or, you know, go kill yourself or, you know, die already. It isn't things like that where it can be a morbid and hyperbolic way of telling someone to shut up. These, from my understanding... And I want to be clear, I am not a licensed paralegal, I'm not a lawyer, but I do know lawyers and I do study the law and I did major in paralegal studies a few years back. And from best I can tell, these are legitimate, legally uh, actionable threats, right? You could get someone arrested for this, right? Like if they were say, if, if, if he was saying this to Ethan out on the street, the police could arrest him for this. So while, again, I don't like Ethan on a personal level, I've had bad interactions with him personally. I don't agree with the way he comports himself online. But all that being said and all of that put aside, this is serious. Okay, this is serious. And I hope that Ethan's taking it and handling it seriously. I know that he likes to go on his show and he likes to sort of, you know, mock people and make fun of them when they do hyper hyperbolic things like this. And if that's how he's handling it, like in, in the public space and on the face of it, that's his choice. But I hope that internally he and his family are taking this seriously because we know that people who are anti-comics gay, it's been demonstrated how far they will go to try to not just disparage someone who is comicscape, but to actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ruin their lives, okay? Anti-comicscape, the comics pros, whatever you want to call it. They, um, again, as, as I said in other videos, looked up information on Ethan's financial history. I would imagine that would also looking up places where he has lived in his life. Right, but they looked up fi financial information on him to uh, uh, find out about a foreclosure that was connected to a personal tragedy in his life. They have, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, they, they have ways of finding information about you. Again, we saw how they went after diversity in comics, looking up his criminal record, looking up... Uh, the state of his military discharges and all this other stuff, right? Now this stuff is a few years back, like 2017, 2018, where the the comics gate or the fans versus the pros was really at its height. But still, if you dig far enough, you can find this stuff, right? DNC's real name was originally revealed, if I remember correctly, via a dox, right? We we know that anti comics gate has done things like SWAT 
Peter Semedi in the middle of a live stream. We know that, that they are crazy enough to do these things. So I hope that for, for whatever Ethan says or how he behaves online, that he takes this seriously because this is actionable, like from best I can tell, given that it's just threats at the moment and, there, and there's been no physical contact. This is most likely, to my understanding, at least uh, under New York state law, would be a, a, a assault in the third degree. Now, for those who may not know the difference or understand, assault doesn't always have to result in physical violence, right? One of the things about the law is that terms that, that, that we use in, say, like an, a regular non-legal context have a very different meaning when applied in a legal context. In a non-legal context, you, you may think of an assault as an actual, you know, fight, right? Fisticuffs, a beat down, right? Physical violent contact made. That's not always the uh, case. Under, to my general understanding, under uh, simple assault or like third degree assault, right? All there really needs to be is a threat, a threat made, a credible threat made, and a reason to believe this threat could be acted upon, right? For example, if uh, a six foot four tall, 300 pound man you know, walks up to you, you know, uh, in a very threatening manner, and he has like, you know, uh, uh, a bat in his hand, and, and he's like, I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna beat the living hell out of you. And you're like, you know, five foot four, a hundred pounds, shaking in your boots. That's a credible threat because that person has every means at that moment to actually, um, make good on their promise to physically harm you, right? And it's not just you. For example, uh, if, if someone threatens to harm your possessions or actually harms your possessions, for example, and you see this in a, in a lot of, like, you know, pro-female re revenge films, right? Like a woman, you know, blows up her, her cheating uh, husband or boyfriend's ca car, while that may be emancipating in some fashion uh, in the movies, in reality, you are going to go to jail for that. So it doesn't just have to be um, assault on, on the person's physical being. It can be assault on their property. It can be assault uh, on, on people they, they uh, know, like, like threatening to hurt someone in their family. So, and again, I mean, like, I'm going to be clear, I'm not... This is not meant to be legal advice. This is just my understanding of it. Uh, if you want legal advice, contact an attorney. I hope Ethan has or is looking into contacting an attorney because it's the first thing I do. If I came across threats of that nature, this is no joke. <laughs> okay, Someone threatens to, to uh, shoot your fucking face off. That's no joke. I'm taking that as a, as a death threat on my life. That's me personally, but I would definitely take that as, as a death threat. You have just literally threatened to kill me and to kill me in a very, uh, uh, violent manner. So if I was him, if I were Ethan, uh, I would be documenting those tweets. I would be saving them because as we all know, you know, people online, shut their pages down and delete their tweets all the time. So if I were him, I'd be taking screenshots. I'd be doing uh, archive links. I'd be printing out copies if that's possible. I don't know how his work setup is at home. I don't know if he has a printer or anything, but if he does, I'd be making like an actual case file about this if it were me. I would take this as serious as a heart attack, right? Deathly serious, especially since an actual threat in my opinion, a death threat, but, you know, threat of, of, of being shot, right, uh, was made. And apparently it wasn't just made once, it was made multiple times it, as part of a string of, of uh, other threats. Now, of course, Kellerman might say, oh, I, I was just venting or I didn't mean it. If, if it were me, I wouldn't care. I would pursue this as far as the law would allow me to go because you can't let stuff 
like this slide. If you let it slide, then people think they can do this. And not only do they think they can do this, they think they can escalate it, right? And you don't want the escalation because you don't cut up. If, if you don't cut them off at the knees now, if, if, if you don't cut the issue in the bud now, it, it becomes suddenly someone actually being crazy enough, and especially with the coronavirus and, you know, people just being desperate. It becomes someone, you know, shanking you in the middle of the street, okay? I grew up in enough, in a, in a rough neighborhood, and I still live in a rough neighborhood in New York City. I don't put violence past people. I don't care uh, what they look like or who they are, what their age is, what their gender is. You threaten me the same way this guy threatened Ethan. I'm taking every legal recourse against you that I can. So I would go to the police. I would document which cop I spoke to, uh, how they responded to me because sometimes the cops don't take this type of stuff seriously. So I would document that. I would document date, time. If Kellerman continues to make statements, I would document all those things too. Document everything Kellerman says. Document everything that the police do or don't do because God forbid something really goes down and Ethan ends up physically hurt or someone in his family ends up phys physically hurt or threatened. You need that paper trail to, to show that you took every reasonable means of precaution against this. Right, so that's the way I would do it. If I were him, I would contact an attorney. I would start documenting everything. And if my attorney told me so, which lawyers tend to tell you so, uh, once I once I officially heard back from the attorney, I would not talk about the situation Because the more that you say online Especially if there's a court case going on the more likely it is that you will say something dumb that will ruin your case Right for example if Ethan gets a lawyer and the lawyer tells him okay Don't don't talk about this anymore on social media and and he continues to uh, to uh, do so and then he says something Online, like, oh, I don't take this Kellerman guy seriously. He's just, it's just another, you know, uh, a crazy S SJW. Guess what? You've now just killed the, the plausible threat part. Because you, as the threatened person, need to believe that this person is actually capable of physically harming you. So, so if you say something like that, you've just made proving that you had legitimate reason to believe that this person could or was going to harm you, you just made proving it that much more difficult. So if I were Ethan, I would talk to a lawyer. I would do whatever that lawyer said, which would probably be don't talk about the situation anymore on social media. And I would, again, document everything the attorney says, document date, time, document uh, Kel Kellerman's uh, uh, Facebook, post and messages all that stuff document document overload back it up in as many ways as you can on the cloud paper copies personal copies but in ever but whatever different ways that you need I know that for myself I tend to back things up that I find legally important at least in three different areas and I've never received something like this the way Ethan has so if I'm backing it up in three places, he should be backing it up in like five, in my uh, uh, personal opinion and experience. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, take every, every means of precaution that you can to protect yourself and to protect your uh, family, you know. Uh, take every legal means available to you, but document everything that the police do or don't do because they're human too and at times they don't take these things seriously and then god forbid something goes down at least you'll you'll have documentation showing that you that you went to them and they were aware of it right so either way that's the way that's the way i would treat it again this is not legal advice i am not a legal professional 
I'm just someone who just happens to have a little, little understanding of the law, and I'm just drawing on that, on professional and personal experience. And if I were Ethan, this is what I would do. If this actually happened to me, this is what I would do. I do this type of thing for things less than this. So, so, if, so if this were me, I'd be going even more over the top and extra with it. But anyway, uh, that's the video. And for all of my grievances against Ethan Van Skyver, I do mean this sincerely. I wish him no harm. I don't like him, but I wish him and his family absolutely no, no harm. And I hope that if he decides to report this to the legal authorities, that, that they take this uh, seriously. Because you don't have the right to threaten people's physical, threaten their lives and their physical safety. Uh, just because you're upset that uh, uh, Ethan Van Skyver told Larry Hama the uh, truth about Comicsgate, which is that Richard Diversity in Comics was inspired by Larry Hama's work to join the military. That's the truth. DNC has said it himself. Kellerman's having a, a, a nuclear option fit. He's going scorched earth and getting himself in a ton of legal trouble because Ethan spoke the truth to Larry Hama and Larry Hama has either been gr grossly misinformed about Comics Gator or he's flat out lying about it because what he says about it is untrue. And this is and I'm someone who's been following Comics Gate for like for what like over or almost three years, like right? 20, 2017, 2020, so two and a half, three years at this point. So to have this type of response just over an interaction that didn't even involve you, to me is just mind-blowing but this is the state of the world that we live in so uh that's it i wish ethan well in this endeavor and i uh hope and pray for his safety and i hope and pray he takes this seriously and takes it to the law and takes every precaution that he can and that his family can to protect themselves because he does not deserve this he doesn't deserve this at all nobody deserves this but anyway, uh, that's the video. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Talk to you soon. Bye.